feel honored today. I feel honored today to be asked to stand with the family here. I just want to say a few words from my heart. That this insanity that's taken place is unfounded. It's unfounded on many levels. I just want the people to know there are other nooksacks that are not behind this disenrollment that are not part of this 306. But they can't be here. They can't be here. So our prayers go to them as well. So, as I was saying, I'm sure there's people could speak more truthful uh, about the heritage that they belong. I just want to say my heritage a nooksack. At one time, my grandmother, Philomena Perry, was married to Frank George, the sister of Annie George. But, they, but her first husband passed early in age. I guess if they didn't, I'd be your guys' relative today. No, just kidding. But I'm saying, I've known this story, and in talking to the elders, the true history, what we call oral tradition. Oral tradition is deep, and this family knows that tradition of oral tradition. How many here of the family Remember when they were little kids, barely remembering to talk or walk, were told that they were nooksacks. Raise your hand. How many here know family members that used to stop and tell you stories of the nooksack story throughout your growing ages? Raise your hand. How many you heard the stories of the grandmas on their way to their work here in this area that used to tell the stories of where they're from when they had to work the fields, the strawberry fields, the hawk fields in order to survive. And then later, settling in this area, but still retaining their teachings, their language. Raise your hand if you know this. This is oral tradition, my dear friends. This is the real thing. Now these lawyers, they have their job to do, but there's one thing that they forget that oral tradition preempts anything else. Even though we have, and you have, documentation in which was, was not even looked at, dismissed, summarily dismissed, causing this hardship and pain and suffering and hurt. I read the story on the letter from Annie, I believe Hanson, in the Facebook. She told about the kids. The kids. She knew about the Nooksack ancestry. Tony's the one that forwarded that letter. And if she's here, I would like to ask her if she could come forward. If she does show, 
understand she will be on her way or be making her way here. But it's the kids that's suffering needlessly. And yet the hurt goes on. The hurt goes on. I know this is something we have to do, I have to do. This is what I see. When you know what is right, you have to stand with the right. There's even relatives that won't stand with me because they have no information. This is what we have to do. And speaking, talking with one of our elders from other tribes, we have to get the word out. People from other tribes reach out to us and give us the moral support to never give up, to stand tall, don't back down. Mason Morris representing the council, the faction that is perpetrating this, this wrong. We belong! So I'd like to, uh, for the time now, have one of the tribal members Read the letter in its entirety. May I have your t attention for a minute, Tony? Hi, my name is Tony Jones. My mom is. My name is Tony Jones, and my mom is Patricia Miguel Rapata. My dad is Ron Miguel. And my grandparents are Marianne Rapata and Honoretto Rapata. Great grandma Annie George and Matsky George. So I'm gonna read a letter um, that was sent to us, a powerful letter from Anna Hansen. Um, she sent it to me last night. We posted it on our Facebook, the Nooksack 306 page. And I apologize if um, I mispronounce any of her, I mispronounce her native name, um, but I'm going to do the best that I can. An appeal to the Nooksack people. I am your talk bullet. She saw a woman and grandmother. Part of the grandmother's role is to help stop any form of violence that is against the most vulnerable, most innocent, and most powerless in any community, the children. The Nooksack are proud and strong people. You have been caretakers of Nooksack territory since time immemorial. You chose to remain on your land even when the government used its many resources to relocate you. You remain steadfast in your connection to self and land by insisting that the U.S. government see and recognize you as a people and as a nation. Standing with original teachings of who you are and where you belong is courageous, empowering, and right. It is to the spirit of the Nooksack that I appeal to today on behalf of the children. Children depend on adults to create a safe community for healthy growth and development. It is our responsibility to protect them from anything that harms or diminishes their safety and right to a good and healthy life. The recent action by the Nooksack Council to withhold assistance for school costs and supplies based on a child's last name was not only mean and malicious, it crossed the line. It reflects something deeper and more disturbing. 
It is a form of violence that was aimed at the most vulnerable, the children. And when any adult acts with cruelty, meanness, and maliciousness towards a child, it is a cry for help that shouldn't be ignored. Cruelty and malice does not discriminate. It impacts all the children, not just the targeted children. When a child witnesses or is on the receiving end of violence, his or her health and development is immediately impacted. Good health and healthy social development is dependent on how a community helps a child answer three very important questions. First one, who am I? Second, what do I have to offer? And third, where do I belong? Under the guise of identity, the most vulnerable in, nation, in the nation, the children, were targeted by decision makers for exclusion, shaming, injustice, and discrimination. A child would not process this action in terms of blood quantum, identity, enrollment number, or who correctly signed a government document in a timely matter. He or she would have feelings of fear, helplessness, confusion, and a sense of horror, just like I did. Adults whom they know and have been taught to trust are now targeting them. They would ask themselves, why is this happening? Was I bad? Is it my fault? What did I do? And the sad thing is, they have done nothing wrong. Absolutely nothing wrong. That is, unless you use colonized thinking to arrive at a different conclusion. There is a plague at the Auschwitz concentration camp in Poland. It says, quote, those who don't remember the past are doomed to repeat it. George Santana. We and our children are part of a larger untold story in the history of this country. A history of unprecedented human brutality that was aimed at a people based solely on race and the settlers' identification of what Indian is. We were lumped together under the title of the Indian problem to help solve the Indian problem. Countless laws and policies have been thrust upon indigenous people for over 500 years with extinction as a goal. Extinction is the ultimate outcome of disenrollment and yet we are still here. Your targeting of children is no different than when the US government targeted our children because colonizers identified them as Indian, and to be Indian was considered bad, evil, heathen, and wrong. Children were rounded up and taken to boarding schools to take the Indian out of them and turn them into white citizens. This is called oppression. It was wrong then, and it is wrong today. For hundreds of years, in exchange for land and resources, that fully benefited the visitors to our territories. We as indigenous people must continue to prove and document our Indianness to the government so that we might be allowed to live and able to take care of the land we belong to. It is a reprehensible twist of our own history with the US government when a tribal government then tells an entire family that they are not Indian enough and now must leave the land they belong to. Can you not see the cruel irony and horror of all of this? As history repeats itself once again, and those who are oppressed now oppress others in the same group? As a grandmother, the sorrow is in my heart, is deep and inconsolable. I cry for my relatives who are targeted for extinction, and I cry for the children. Children have the least amount of power in our community. Under oppression or any adversity, they suffer even more than grown-ups because they have fewer inner resources with which to cope. The disenrollment of 306 Nooksack members is a sad but true reenactment of what was done to us as indigenous people. Reenactment is an outcome of unresolved historical trauma. The impact on the children and families over the generations from our collective histories of massive loss and pain from colonization is well established in the research. 
Reenactment is a cry for help. Without help, anxiety, stress, helplessness, and fear will dominate and take its toll on the health, mental, emotional, spiritual, and social development of the whole community. No one is left unscathed. All children are at a greater risk in an environment of prolonged crisis because of age, level of physiological, anatomical, cognitive, emotional, and spiritual development, and the ability or inability of community members to intervene in violent actions and behaviors towards children. I ask with deepest concern and compassion for each of you, please stop repeating the legacy of our painful history. The children who were targeted are Nooksack. This enrollment continues to be extinction no matter how you describe it. I respectfully ask the adults, especially the grandmothers and grandfathers in the community to help stop any and all acts of violence through behaviors and decision-making processes that target children, regardless of race, color, creed, or last name. The price is too high. To protect and grow our children in safe and welcoming environments, it is at the center of indigenous way of life. It is yours and my responsibility to put children first, to treat them with kindness and care, because each and every child has the right to grow into the beauty and sacredness of who they are as human beings. This is the way of life that has kept us alive despite massive brutality for centuries from others. Helping one another heal from historical trauma is like untying a string of knots. It will take time to undo the knots. It requires humility, generosity, respect, truth, honor, trust, and faith in self and our people and love for one another. This can be done because it has been done by those ancestors who walked before us and showed us this way of life. From
Thank you, sacred water, songs, prayer songs, and the young ones for coming forth to sing the prayers and the dance to the prayers. It lifts us up in a big way. We need prayer. We need prayer. It was said that the leader of the tribe and council in question, his answer, he wants the, to this question of why. It says, we want a smaller tribe. That was his answer. He wants the tribe smaller. Now think about that for one minute. Is there anybody here ever hear that spoken? We want a smaller tribe. That just begs the question, who's next? Our leader, the leaders of other tribes gave us strong advice the other day. She told us, who's next? I'm next. Hey, I'm next. Whoever's next, I'm next. take heed. The leader in question wants to have a smaller tribe. Okay, after this, let's just say, follow the logic. After this, now he wants a smaller tribe yet. Okay, after that, next disenrollment, he wants a smaller tribe yet, yet. That means maybe there's just one person standing to be the tribe, according to that logic. So, in, in our request to right the wrong and reaching out to fellow people that face the same hurt as we giving us strong advice and strong hearts and strong minds this is what's been helping us and we thank each and every one of you for being here standing here tall with us we thank the Yakima sign that was seen Yakima support <laughs> I want to thank all the other tribes, other Coast Salish tribes, Squamish, thank the Squamish, and thank you, and the other tribes, I hear a shout out. Ojibwe, do we have a shout out for the Ojibwe? Right Four camels to feed them. Nukayit. Nukayam, Nukayit. Port Port Angeles. Elswa. Elswa. Nukayam. Ostayam. Anywhere shout out? Huh? Squamish. Can we have a shout out for the Squamish? Raise your hand, Squamish. They're our close relatives, as you know. The story of our of when the flood we separated. Colville. Musqueam. Just here for a shout out for the Musqueam. Mustio. Musqueam. Mustio. Mojave from Death Valley. Mojave from Death Valley. Yeah. Shout out for Mojave from Death Valley. Anyone else? We could give a shout out to Squawkson. Squawkson. Let's give a shout out to Squawkson. Dene, Dene, and Dene, 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 Dene. Yucky. Any yucky, let's give a shout out for the yucky. Yucky. 
Let's have another shot. Anybody else? Hide us. Hide us. Clean Let's give a shout out for the clean and the Hide us. Squay. Squay, Miss Steele. Tim Tien. Tim Tien, let's have a shout out. In the pinno, Any other shout outs? Aztecas. Thank you. Chalagi. 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 The Cherokee as known as Cherokee. Chalagi. Any more shout outs? I want to thank each and every one of you for standing tall with us. This is very important because if it affects one, it affects all. This year, this year the biggest disenrollment in the state of Washington, as far as I know, is unheard of. It is unheard of. Think about it. We know the underlying premise of this whole thing, making the tribe smaller, making the tribe smaller. I just couldn't believe my ears. We want to make the tribe smaller. Has any other tribe said that before? I've never heard it before. I, I, I was, I'm still having a hard time wrapping my head around that. This is what we're up against. The misinformation, ignorance, unwillingness to sit down and talk to us. They're right now having their own rally. But this year, rally far outreaches theirs because ours stand for truth, and justice, and the carrying on of the traditions. One of our elders, that one of the members here spoke to, if I could use his name, Philip, spoke to one of our elders withholding names at this time. But she, he asked the question when she told that Annie lived, stopped at her house. Annie George stopped as a visitor with her husband, Andrew, in routes as we do as Coast Salish, as we do all First Nations. We visit our relatives, our close relatives. And she said that Annie called her husband, cousin, a nooksack. And he, he in turn, this was back in the 40s. This is oral tradition, my dear friends and relatives. We know this as I was bringing this out earlier. You've been told when you were growing up who you are, where you belong. You knew that, you've known that since you, your early awakening. Just as I. You knew who your relatives were back then and even today. So I'd like to call upon, right now I'll take this moment to ask if there's anybody here would like to say a few words be on standby or come forward if we could have another song Satlam Timiktil Kaka Hotum